Today is the day. It's overcast. We're supposed to actually be getting a big snowstorm. So I want to get this done and completed today. I was out here a few days ago and I cleaned out this bed here and I just wanted to get ahead of it. Just wanted to also just spend some time outside. This is the only official perennial bed in the garden. I really would like to have more flowers for the pollinators and the beneficials. I'm gonna be able to have probably another six plants out of what I have here, I hope. I want to get this finished up today so that everything is in place before the snowstorm starts. Um, I'm excited to show you. Let's get going. A few days ago, we removed the low tunnel that used to be here. This arch is sort of in my way here to be able to properly get in here. And I've always wanted this arch over there, but because of the low tunnel with the hinge, we weren't able to put it over there. So let me take a second and do that right now. That was hard work back there. Now we're ready to start separating these perennials. We have two flocks. This phlox is called ultraviolet and it is a tall garden phlox. This one in the back, this one is called bright eyes and it is absolutely stunning. Now, this one is a Veronica. I don't have the tag anymore, but it's a Veronica Speedwell. It's also pink. Um, all of these are actually pink. And we also have some some thyme growing in here. Those ones are gonna, uh, gonna stay where they are. And then a friend of mine gave some giant alliums to me last year. And this little one is starting to come up. It is absolutely adorable. I cannot wait to, wait to see the giant allium coming up in here. And then in the front for ground cover, we have a Steppables product, which is mahogany bugleweed. And I love this stuff. I have it in multiple places around the garden. Um, it's a steppable, so like you can, you can walk on the path and it's not gonna be affected at all. I believe that is the third year for this one. And I also have one at the end of this bed here. This one I still have to go through and pick out all the dead leaves. And then you can see our yarrow is starting here. Oh, and those, um, those little nests right there are from the garden spiders. A lot of them around here especially in the bramble just on the outside of the garden
This one, I'm gonna take it all out of here and then I'm gonna divide it into two and put some of it back. It looks really tiny right now, but I promise you this makes sense. <laughs> looks really good. I'm gonna go with some water. So we have this one left. I wanna plant this one in this bed because this is where our chairs are. And the middle of this bed is really hard to get at. I wanna be able to plant something there that I don't need to worry about. You don't need to deadhead these ones. They just grow, uh, they last until about mid-August, then they start fading away. But they, they last all summer pretty much. So I'm gonna plant this right in that corner. I'm gonna go grab a shovel. I'm just gonna mix in some of this um, compost in with the native soil, just to give this a little bit of a head start. It just did sort of get a shock. Chamomile's coming back from last year. Get some water for that. With how hard it was to cut up that phlox, I think that the hori hori is actually gonna be the preferred tool for this job. With the edger, I feel like it's just pushing pushing it down as opposed to cutting it. So I'm gonna try this one instead and see if it works any better. I'm gonna loosen this up around the edges first. And on this one, I'm just gonna actually cut the back off. I'm gonna take the back and I'm gonna leave the front there because the back always overtakes this bed in the back. So that's the plan. Hey, that is so tough. One piece right in the middle. Perhaps I waited too long. Perhaps I should have did this last year. I just didn't think they were ready, but they obviously were. Look at all those roots. But this one's gonna stay just like this. I'm gonna leave this guy right here. I just took half. A little less will grow back from this this year, but that's okay because it, it has room to grow now. It has room to spread out its roots. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to put this one right here. Um, this is right in the aisle when you come into the garden. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to plant it right here. I don't actually even have to do much because the garden is very low, needs soil. 
So I'm just gonna make a little front for it. And then put it in place and see. I kinda want it to be directly on the outside, actually. This is mostly soil brought in. Our native soil is very, very much full of clay. Well, it's pretty much clay. So once we build up this bed, this will be on the top. Looks kind of strange now, but this, all this whole bed needs to be filled up. I'm just gonna go with some water. I'm gonna take these bamboo stakes and put them into where I put the transplants because I probably won't remember where I put them once we start cleaning out all these beds and I could move them around and, and hurt them in some way. So one in there and then I'm gonna go put one over where I put the other one. I forget where they are. I have a stake to remind me where they are. I'm not sure if you guys can see it or not, but it's starting to snow. So I'm gonna take a second and just finish this one off. Enjoy the time lapse. Well, that one was so much easier than those flocks. So now I've got two holes to fill, but I'm gonna leave that one there just like that. I'm gonna cut this one in two. It can handle it. Got lots of growth on the top there. Lots of roots coming down through. Amazing. Now I got two plants there. So out of one plant, I was able to make three plants that I don't have to go buy at the store. It's amazing. did a number on my hands. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I love it though. I love it. I think actually what I'm gonna do with this uh, Veronica uh, speedwell that's left, I'm gonna put it in a pot and I'm gonna give it to a friend of mine and she's gonna absolutely love having that in her garden. Can you see this snow? This probably is going to be our last snow of the year. Probably. I guess it's time to finish up this project. So we're gonna start filling these holes up. Wow, you can barely even see what I did here.
We also use these buckets for things you can do with garlic. We use these. You should go check out that video if you haven't seen it. It's one of my favorite. I love garlic. I love growing garlic. I'm growing garlic right now. So go check it out. I'm so happy that those perennials are divided now. It was perfect timing. Um, we were supposed to do it on a cloudy day. And just as they're starting to poke out of the ground so you know which ones took and which ones didn't. We also got an extra plant for a friend, which I always love. And um, we decided on where the arch was going too, which is great. I'm going to probably grow, well, I'm definitely going to be growing vining plants on that. And I'm thinking maybe I'm going to go with the Scarlet Runner Bean again. That one has beautiful orange flowers on it that the hummingbirds just go crazy over. It's always full of hummingbirds and they're really, really easy to grow too. I'll also link a video here of our garden tour last year. So you can kind of get an idea of what our garden looked like on our eighth year of gardening and what it's going to potentially look like in the upcoming season of 2024. I'm so excited. I know you guys are all excited to um, start planting your seeds inside. It is time to do that. Start planting your seeds inside. I wish you luck with your gardens with your seed starting and take care. We're grateful for you. Bye.